welcome to the third lecture on health, safety and environmental management in offshore and petroleum engineering shortly called as HSE under the braces of NPTEL IIT Madras. In the last two lectures, we discussed about introduction to safety, what are the lessons we generally learn from previous accidents that has occurred in oil and gas industries, what lessons are beneficial to us, what are the different rules we can frame, we can form so that safety becomes a part of education given to the personnel working in oil and gas industries. Now, we are moving towards the module 1 which is on safety assurance and assessment, I will now take you to the third lecture that is safety assurance. When we talk about safety assurance, let us ask a fundamental question, can we really prevent disasters in oil and gas industries? Because these accidents which are catastrophic disasters not only result in human loss of life who are highly technically qualified, but also it incurs lot of financial loss to the plant. So, the economic control is also very important therefore, we must avoid these accidents. Can we really prevent these disasters in oil and gas industries? If not, can we really predict them? Now, here the question comes what is the importance of safety assurance which is involved. There are essential features of safety assurance program. A safety assurance should confirm prevention of death or injury to any worker working in the plant. It should also deal with prevention of death or injury to the general public who are located nearby in the vicinity of the plant what we call societal damage. It should also ensure prevention of physical and financial damage to the plants that is very important. Safety does not only address the physical loss of life, it is also focused on the financial damage caused to the plant because this can result or such accidents can result in catastrophic economic imbalance of the country as well as for the specific organization whose plants are encountering serious catastrophic damages. It also focuses on prevention of damage to any third party property located nearby. So, it is not only focused on your own property where you do exploration, processing, production and transportation, but also it is your due responsibility to protect the damage caused to plants or any property located nearby. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it is very important that when you talk about risk assessment, what is the spread of risk of your plant on the societal area is also important. That is what we call as hazardous distances, where any plant located nearby the vicinity of your production unit is also susceptible or viable for any such risks. So, safety assurance is not only focused on your plant, your personal, your property, but also it should focus on prevention of damage to any third party property located nearby the vicinity of your plant. Over and above most importantly you should have a goal which leads to prevention of damage to the environment. Because as we all understand oil and gas industries which focus on exploration of oil from deep sea, shale gas etcetera, there are lot of crude material which are explored which becomes waste after they are processed. Now, these waste material has need to be discharged. So, one cannot discharge them along with the drilling fluid contents into the sea as it is because this can cause lot of environmental imbalance to the aqua life or the marine life present in sea environment. Therefore, your safety assurance program is a very broad in nature also focuses on prevention of damage to the environment. So, ladies and gentlemen safety term related to oil and gas industry 
is not only injury to the worker, it is not only the personal safety, it is also the personal safety of the general public, it is also the financial damage protection of the property, it is also protection of the third party property located nearby your area and over and above by and large this is also prevention of damage to the environment in general. So, safety term related to oil and gas industry is a very large perspective. So, looking at safety assurance, looking at safety development programs or by and large interest that is why safety is a core interest area in oil and gas industries. Yesterday we introduced what do we mean by safety, let us now talk about importance of safety. When we ask the question when a safety regulation is violated, it is a very interesting and basic question. Generally safety regulations are totally personal to start with. For example, any individual present in the plant working in the sector or working on board, if he encounters, if he encourages any procedural violation, obviously they can be individually violating the regulations of safety in the plant. So, as long as they do individual violation, it is only concentric towards them. But let us see how safety is challenged when this grows with a larger dimension. Now, if we all understand that individual group of people or individual units of people working in the plant on different segments has a very poor intercommunication protocols. It means the protocol available for intercommunication between them is not enough. So, there is inadequacy in shift handovers. It means one person is working on one shift, let us say A shift in the morning, he has got to hand over the liabilities, risk and responsibilities to the next personnel or next team coming on the next shift B. If he does not communicate proper protocol of all the safety implementations, what he has been regulated during his shift to the person on the next shift, this is also a procedural violation. Now, one can wonder that if a single unit or a single personnel in an unit violates individually a safety protocol, what happens? If this person joins a unit and does not communicate inter between the groups in a proper form, then there is a second level of growth of safety violation. Adding to this, if the facilities, equipments like for example, alarm systems, signal development systems, human machine interface design is not effective in a given mechanism of production, then this will add further complication to a safety violation. Remember ladies and gentlemen, the safety violation started or safety irregularity started with a single individual person in a small unit. When he is not communicating that violation within a group and there is a control violated within a group, it grows. When the environment or for example, the mechanisms available in the plant also does not cooperate, there is an inadequate design in the alarm development systems, then the safety violation grows on a larger dimension. Adding to it, if the organization and the management is also not caring about the safety updates. For example, an individual in a group reported erosion of any specific wall. He requested the replacement of a specific wall, but the management or the organization did not take enough care to replace the wall within a stipulated time as recommended by the individual safety personnel. So, now, an individual reported a safety violation, but the organization did not take care or attach importance to that specific violation. So, that is what we call as overruling of management in with respect to the safety violations. So, safety walls are not replaced for example, management in general has what we call a safety violation culture and management does not take the maintenance program very seriously. It is not periodically done inspections are not carried out, the post inspection reports are not distributed, they are not consulted amongst the group. Now, a small violation of an individual not being communicated to the group, grown to a larger extent, mechanisms are not in proper place, organization is not cooperative in terms of safety regulations, 
putting all together when you have a complication external in the environment. For example, the workplace facilities is not comfortable, the weather window is becoming very serious in such situation safety violations becomes very very strong. Now, one can ask a fundamental question if you look all of them all these violations individually happening at a different time scale. For example, the individual violation happens at a specific time specific period whereas, at the same time the violation on communication protocol does not happen. It means if there is no alignment of these mistakes together then the problem is less serious, but if they get violated if they all align completely on one go for example, starting with the individual together with the environment all unfortunately get aligned at the same shot then this is what we call as full disaster. Unfortunately, in oil and gas industries wherever we encountered disasters reported in the previous case sheets in the last lectures you would always appreciate that all these violations starting from individual together with the environmental complication where get unfortunately aligned themselves. That is why all these accidents resulted in a very serious protocol violation of safety. Therefore, safety is not concerned only with the individual violation when individual violate safety it can become a catastrophic event if that violation gets aligned with all at different stages in the production of a plant. Let us quickly see what are the major trends involved in disasters of offshore plants. Essentially depending upon the survey conducted by various people report in the literature for your information ladies and gentlemen there is a very detailed list of references available given in NPTEL website which contains lot of textbooks, reference material, journal papers, international conference proceedings. I would urge all the listeners to collect a good database of all of them and go through them. Try to have a parallel reading of all the support material along with my lecture if you really want to get the maximum benefit of my lecture. So, based, based upon different literature review conducted by various researchers following are some major findings reported in the journal papers. They are focused on answering one question what is that is what are the trends in major disasters? What could be the reason major disasters happened in oil and gas industries? The foremost reason has been seen is that inadequate design. The design protocol is not adequate to meet rough weather conditions. It means the adequate design is not compatible with that of the weather conditions when they become rough. So, you have no control on the weather window, but you certainly have a control on design procedures. If your design procedures are not rugged, they are not robust, so that they can meet at least survivability requirements even during the rough weather condition, then major disasters in offshore plants could be avoided. So, this is one of the foremost reason why these disasters happen in offshore plants. The next in the list is the blowouts. We all know blowouts really are accidents which are not controllable. There are many factors which influences blowout activities. We all understand as a practicing professional we do care for safety, but blowouts are really uncontrollable incidences which happen in offshore production units. The third reason essentially is fire. Now, one can ask a very interesting question what would be the fundamental reason for platform to set a blaze? Very important reason why a platform can set a blaze is you have lot of inert material, you have got lot of material available in inventory and stock on the plant which can catch fire. There is a separate module what we will discuss about fire resistant design of offshore structures where we talk about how this fire can be avoided by design in offshore platforms. Followed by fire of course, is the explosion because all the chemical inventories involved in oil and gas industry has got very high flammability requirements. Once they reach the temperature and pressure they get exploded, once it becomes exploded or explosive they spread for a large duration a large circumferential area causing a thick smoke and a catastrophic damage to the entire asset and liability of the plants. 
The other reason which has been found as one of the critical reasons for major disasters is vessel collision. Vessel collision can be one due to bad weather conditions, second due to improper and uncontrollable maneuverability requirements of the vessels. So, therefore, one good reason what we found out from the literature is the major disasters that occur due to weather conditions are declining because the design has improved to cater to rough weather conditions as well. The design techniques, the design methods have been revised consistently and continuously and recommended by various international procedures and codal provisions where these design methodologies enable a very robust design which can cater survivability challenges even during rough weather condition. Therefore, in the recent past it has been noticed that the improved design conditions has resulted in reduction of major disasters caused only due to weather conditions. However, the design errors, the update errors available which are resulting in blowouts, fire, explosion and vessel collision are still major challenges in avoiding catastrophic accidents in offshore and oil and gas industries. Now, a question comes in our mind, why major disasters are important? What do we learn from them? We have seen a list of accident scenarios in the last lecture. We realize these accidents resulted in loss of life who are highly technically qualified. Hiring such technical personnel is practically impossible because they are trained professionals. Therefore, the loss of life of such professional really affects the production of the plant. It really borders the image of the industry and therefore, safety assurance is essentially challenged. Why major disasters are important? We can very really understand now though these disasters have very low probability, but the consequences caused by these incidents are very very and phenomenally high. Actually these accidents occur due to coincidence of series of lapses as we saw in the last slide it is orientation or alignment of mistakes committed by an individual which can result in a disaster. Therefore, personal safety is foremost important in oil and gas industries. Ignorance, illiteracy when they are combined together will result in what we call natural hazards. So, you should be educated and at the same time you should always be known and updated about all mechanical, electrical process safety regulations when you are put on board before you are given a work permit to work on board an oil and gas industry. Studies unfortunately or fortunately show that 75 percent of the disasters are essentially due to human and organizational factors. That is very alarming picture here. When organization do not focus on training of safety assurance to their personnel, when human do not take safety as one of the educative mode and practice safety in oil and gas production systems, it will result catastrophically to about 70 percent. Of course, the remaining comes from flaws engineering design and selection of equipments. If you consider this as one of the techno economic requirements of saving oil and gas industries, but I would put the first point as an important productive point from our goal that we can avoid at least close to 60 percent of formation of these accidents if we are educated and we can inculcate a good work culture in the organization which essentially and predominantly and stringently focuses on safety first. When we talk about safety then ultimately the question comes in mind is what is the consequence of safety violation? The essential consequence of safety violation is a great loss. It can be a human loss, it can be an economic loss. Now, we will talk about what are those different loss control measures. Can I control the loss? See, I cannot avoid the loss because loss is a consequence which is very very high in case of accidents happening in oil and gas industries. So, loss cannot be completely avoided. Can I control 
can you minimize, can you mitigate the losses? Is it possible? So, what are the loss control measures? Loss control measures needs proper risk management. So, one must first understand what is the risk involved in this kind of problems. How do you manage risk if the risk is encountered? It demands a detailed risk survey. So, one should know how to conduct a risk survey. You should be able to identify the risk and subsequently the consequences caused by that risk. Therefore, based on this you can establish risk level in all scenarios. So, you should be educated to identify different scenarios in a given plant. You should know how to identify the risk in a given plant. You should also know what are the consequences associated with that risk. Therefore, you can establish comfortably a risk level. We will do an example in the next lecture a problem will be solved to ascertain a risk level. Therefore, you will be having an hands on experience on ascertaining risk level as a safety executive. Over and above it is very important to realize that good practice of upgrading the acceptability of risk level is very important. Risk level is defined as acceptable levels in oil and gas industries. We all agree that risk cannot be made to 0 in oil production systems because there are various factors which cannot be controlled by a human intervention. However, they can be minimized, they can be mitigated, they can be predicted in advance and therefore, you can take some measures to minimize the loss. Clearly understand now, I am moving from safety to loss prevention. The moment I address loss prevention, I am addressing economic control of the plant. Therefore, even though accidents do occur, even though safety is violated by unfortunate incidences, but still the economic loss, the personal safety violation does not become serious. Therefore, the image of the production unit, image of the manufacturing concerns, image of the personal and safety assurance are maintained in order even though accidents cannot be completely avoided, but we can always minimize them. So, good practice of upgrading the acceptability is very important. So, you must have a proper knowledge, proper education and proper continuous updates of current safety standards practiced in oil and gas industries. Above all, in organization level, you should also be aware of different policy and planning upgrades, which address periodic risk assessment and therefore, recommend certain correction measures. So, education of safety or risk assessment or risk management is not only concentrated with the personnel working on board, right from the blue collar list of people working in the industry to the brown collar people working on board, safety is important to all of them. Safety should be practiced, updated by all of them by and large. This slide actually shows a example which has been conducted a survey in 2 years 2008 and 9 and 9 and 10. So, 3 installations and 1 drilling rig has been considered for the survey. The survey essentially brings an outcome on what would be the identified risk involved in different plants. As I said in the beginning the risk involved will be converted to the commercial or the financial loss. So, I will convert them in terms of risk in million US dollars. Okay. So, I have ascertained installation 1 and 2, installation 3 and drilling rig in the span of 2 years 2008, 9 and 9 and 10. If you look at this table quickly, there has been a constant risk involved and identified in all these installations ascertained for the past 2 years of 8, 9 and 9 and 10. However, the risk identified whose cost is crossing about 200 million dollars plus is minimized, is reduced. In 2008 possibly one installation had specific loss of commercial loss of 2000 million, 200 million US dollars exceeding by about 3 in number whereas, this has been reduced practically to 0. So, there has been methods 
there has been safety practices implemented in different industries in oil and gas production systems where the safety is being addressed therefore, identified risks are reduced. However, if you look at the low level risk assessments that is the cost of risk less than 20 million US dollars they are more or less consistent happening in the past 2 years. This is an indication that the cost implementation and low level risks are not focused by the organization whereas, cost involvement high economic loss have been focused by the organization. But if you look at the overall assessment there has been no rescue of risk identified in the past 2 years. It varies anywhere from 20 to as high as 31. It means the risk cannot be completely avoided, risk is happening they have been identified and they all result in a commercial loss as close as as high as 200 million dollars and the minimum loss which has been studied is about close to 20 million US dollars which is also substantially go huge amount of money for a production unit. The next table shows ascertaining the risk in different installation units of 1, 2, 3 and drilling ring 1 in the 2 years period of 2008, 9 and 9 and 10 which had shown the total risk of 20 to 31 variability what would be those acceptable risks and what will be those unacceptable level of risk measures. So, unacceptable level is shown in red, acceptable is shown in yellow and adequate controls available in place is shown in green. Fortunately, those risk levels less than a rank of 6 are all acceptable because there are adequate control measures available. Those acceptable level of risks up to 9 has been also indicated they have been consistently level lower than this. However, interestingly as safety practice has been stringently implemented in various oil and gas industries all over the world you will see that unacceptable risk the red band risks are practically 0. So, there has been reduction in risk which are unacceptable but remember there has been accidents which have resulted in financial loss. So, now there is a variation here risks are unacceptable they are not reported, but financial loss have been reported as high as 200 million US dollars. So, there is a focus ladies and gentlemen here risk also has a component of economy involved money monetary part involved in risk assessment. So, can we redirect the risk discussions from safety of a personal and equipment to safety of money investors that is economical safety which is also one of the important perspective of risk management. So, therefore, interesting question comes in mind what are the safety divisions available? Personal safety, process safety, product and environmental safety, plant and equipment safety, well safety, fire detection and suppression safety, offshore logistic safety which includes helicopter safety and marine safety, hydrogen sulphide safety specifically, security threats, corrosion check and control measures, crane safety and monsoon preparations. There are various divisions of safety involved ladies and gentlemen in oil and gas industries. Let us at least see one of them in detail slightly. Let us talk about quickly the helicopter safety because remaining all I will cover them in the successive module separately. I want to just briefly introduce very summary of an helicopter safety. These are two pictures shown where the chopper has been completely grounded, completely immersed. This is a catastrophic accident and you lose the chopper completely. What are the standards available for helicopter safety? What are those factors which challenges helicopter safety? Essentially, the risk of height invokes higher accident probability. When you work on greater heights, it results in what is called higher fatality accident rate that is called FAR. It is not floor area ratio as we seen in buildings. Here it is fatality accident rate. It is higher as you work on 
higher heights or on the other hand the FIR increases with increase in million hours of operation. So, if you keep on increasing the period of operation of an helicopter working at greater heights the FIR will keep on increasing. There are many reasons for this some of them identified as a study conducted by my colleagues and different research papers one is operating in poor weather conditions other is operating with excessive loads negligent maintenance done for the helicopters under trained pilots have been deployed essentially it has been found that excessive hours of operation has formed a major reason for helicopter accidents there are different industry standards where helicopter safety actually is being deliberated for information of the users let us list the standards cap 437 standards for offshore helicopter landing areas ICAO international standards which is governed by international civil aviation organization health and usage monitoring systems which we call briefly as HUMS UKOOA which is offshore operators association guidelines crew resource management which is called as CRM and the helicopter operating and maintenance program which we call as HUMP. These are some of the list of standards which focus on how helicopter safety can be ascertained can be assured when you operate a choppers for oil and gas industry production systems. Parallel to this is marine logistics which is also important because one is in air one is in water. So, marine logistics focus on what could be the platform support vessels which will be kept on emergency, what should be the offshore supply vessel configurations, how much should be the standby in number, what should be the interfield transfer configurations, what should be the supply vessel configuration for regular food, water supply etcetera, what should be the configuration of the multipurpose supply vessels which the offshore production systems depend on, what should be the configuration of the crude tankers or tankers for crude transport to the offshore locations, patrolling vessels for security purposes, speed boats for transporting the crew to unmanned platforms because unmanned platforms on emergency call should be attended in case of any requirement and so on so forth. Let us now move towards what are terminologies involved in risk assessment. One can ask a question how risk assessment becomes vital. We have seen in the previous slides that risk management, risk preparedness, risk mitigation and risk assessment are essential heartbeat of implement of safety program by any organization or by any safety individual personnel. There are different terminologies which are very important which are commonly used in literature regarding risk assessment. What is an accident? An accident is an occurrence of single or sequence of events that produce unintended loss. The accident generally refers to the occurrence of events, it does not refer to the magnitude of the event. Please understand it is only the occurrence not the magnitude. Safety or loss prevention is defined as the prevention of hazard occurrences that is accidents through proper hazard identification, assessment and elimination. What is an hazard? Hazard is a chemical or a physical condition, it is a scenario which has a potential to cause damage to people, property or environment or are coming under the single brace called hazard. What is an incident? Incident is the loss of contamination of material or energy. All incidents do not propagate to accidents, remember that. There are two different terms accident and incident are different incident is a loss of contamination or of material or energy all incidents do not propagate to form or to become an accident. What is the consequence? Consequence is a measure of expected effects of result of an accident. It is not unexpected consequence is a measure of expected effects. Therefore, if you assess risk you must know what is the effect of the violation of safety or risk in terms of expected effects caused by these violations. 
Therefore, risk is a measure of both magnitude of damage along with its probability of occurrence. So, we said in the last lecture risk is a product of magnitude and occurrence or probability of occurrence or frequency. One can compare now what is the difference between safety and risk. Safety and risk are essentially contemporary. Let us learn to measure risk because safety cannot be measured as a subjective term. Safety can be indirectly expressed. Safety management is highly subjective and qualitative. To make it quantitative, risk assessment is actually carried out. So, risk can be classified into two types. One is called <laughs> individual risk, other is called societal risk. Let us define what is individual risk. The individual risk is defined as the frequency at which individual may be expected to sustain a given level of harmness from realization of an hazard. It usually accounts only the risk of death. It is expressed as risk per year. Individual risk can be expressed in two forms. It can be expressed as individual risk per year or fatality accident rate abbreviated as FAR. Average individual risk is given by a simple expression. It is number of fatalities over the number of people at risk. Societal risk is also an important dimension. It is defined as relationship between the frequency and the number of people suffering a given level of harmness from realization of hazard. Here, the level of harmness is predefined. Remember that is a very important catch here. Population exposed to risk is one of the vital data. For example, if the population is minimized who is exposed to risk, obviously the risk level in societal damage will be lower. Alternatively, if the level of harm is predefined, then also the estimate of societal risk will be lower. Societal risk is expressed in two forms. It can be based on the Fn curves showing relationship between the cumulative frequency which is marked as F and the number of fatalities which is marked as N in the Fn curve can also be expressed as annual fatality rates in which the frequency and fatality data are combined together in a convenient single measure of what we call group risk. Now, the question is how to measure accident or a loss because it appears to me as it is subjective, but we can still measure a loss. Let us see how. Of course, there is no single method which is capable of measuring accident or loss statistics with respect to all the required aspects involved in an accident. There are three systems which are commonly recommended by the industry to measure accident or loss. One is suggested by OSHA which is Occupational Safety and Health Administration, US Department of Labor. Other can be the fatality accident rate as an equation suggested in the earlier slide. The next method can be fatality rate per person per year. Now, interestingly all these three methods of measuring accident has a commonness between them. Let us see what is the commonness. The commonness in all the three method is the fixed number of working hours during a specific period of time. All these three associate only a fixed number of working hours. Therefore, the population exposed to risk in terms of working hours is always limited, is always considered as an important vital data in assessing risk. Let us talk about what is the logical risk analysis? Can I make risk analysis logical? The question comes in mind why to talk of risk when we talk about safety? Answers are very simple. Risk and safety are contemporary. Risk can be quantified, safety cannot be because it is qualitative statement, it is highly subjective. Risk estimates are generally outcome of mathematical studies. Safety measures or outcome of surveys. So, there is a difference between this. Therefore, to quantify loss which is one of the serious consequence of lack of safety risk is estimated. So, safety is indirectly addressed 
computed, calculated and visualized as risk assessment and management in oil and gas industries. Let us talk about what are the uncertainties associated with risk. Risk is a combination of consequence and uncertainties associated with the consequence. There can be different assessment of uncertainties, there can be different views how to deal with these uncertainties. Risk estimates are therefore, a an important decision making process. To active a decision making process or uh, to make it activated, there are goals to be set. Therefore, what are these goals for risk assessment? Risk reduction is one of the goal which depends on factors that cause risk, how to control or reduce them, factors that cause serious consequences, how to control or reduce them. Risk elimination depends on making the probability of occurrence of the accidents very minimal. This will have very low impact on risk elimination, make the impact resulting from consequences very insignificant. Therefore, risk is a three dimensional problem. The first dimension is probability of occurrence of an event, the second could be consequences, the third dimension is manageability if the risk occurs. So, risk management is what we call as risk preparedness in oil and gas industries. Risk manageability is very important because some risk are more manageable, meaning that potential for reducing that risk is larger in case of certain risk management problems. Risk assessment is therefore, risk analysis and evaluation of results. It is also called as QRA which is quantitative risk assessment when they are applied to oil and gas industries. It is called as PRA which is probability risk assessment when they are applied in nuclear industries. It is called as PSA when used in nuclear industries. It is called as CSC when it is initiated in Norway studies. It is called as total risk analysis which becomes a part of detailed fatality risk analysis. Therefore, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You cannot solve the problem with the same kind of thinking that created the problem as said by His Excellency Albert Einstein. Safety has got two facets, one is a line, it is called occupational safety, it happens in groups, it is a killer, it is often visible, it can never be fully tamed, can never be fully left unguarded, it requires a constant vigilance. The other one is process safety which is like a tiger, it kills alone, it is hard to detect, it is not commonly seen, it is a killer, it can never be fully tamed, it can never be left unguarded and at the same time it requires a constant vigilance. Safety matters ladies and gentlemen, if safety is challenged, you are in serious trouble. Let us see the summary of this lecture, disasters in oil gas industries cannot be prevented they can be predicted, reduced, mitigated and controlled. Disaster is an orientation of all errors, committed by an individual caused by group of people getting aligned. Improved design techniques can reduce occurrence of disasters. Safety and risk are contemporary, safety cannot be measured as it is qualitative, risk can be measured because it is mathematically modeled. Risk is a three dimensional problem. The third dimension is risk preparedness. Thank you very much for seeing this lecture.